Comes on late, but it's Strathmore coming away. Strathmore goes on for a very solid win. Jet Wings held on to second. My little friend just third over Country Melody, who got out late, and then Charity Joy. Next was Go Baby Go from... Chad, tell me. Your dad, what advice did he give you about racing in Hong Kong? He must have given you some advice. Yeah, he has. Um, prior to when I left Australia, I spent a week in Sydney. Um, and yeah, we had lots of long talks about what it's like here. You know, the track work side of things and the races and the rail placements on both Happy Valley and, and Sha Tin and also the rating system. Um, he's given me a lot of advice, um, the best way to, to manage your bookings um, for the races and um, yeah, he's been very helpful, obviously he was very successful over here, I think in his first season he finished third on the Premiership, so he did very well over here and um, it was good to get that inside of him. So what do you think was the best piece of advice he gave you? If you had to pick one, what would it be? Um, Probably um, the rating system and explaining to me, you know, the, how it, how important it is, um, how much a horse can improve, jump out the ground when he drops in class, and and and, and all that kind of thing. So um, it was very interesting. So um, your family has been a great support system for you, right? And your sisters here now, and your mum. Yep. Um, at the moment, my mum's here. She's been here about two weeks, and. My little sister as well. I think my little sister goes home at the end of this week, but then the big one comes. So it's good to have good to have them over here while I'm still getting settled in. And um, mom's good. She's doing all the cooking and cleaning, so it's nice. When you said the the big one's coming soon, you looked a little horrified. Does, does it scare you? Yeah, she's um, keeps me on my toes. That's for sure. She yeah. um, now Whitney. She's really good. I'm very close to her. Um, she loves, loves to go racing as well, so I'm sure um, she'll come support me at Charlton on, on the weekend. How does she keep you on your toes? Well, she's, um, she makes sure I'm always you know, on the straight and narrow, and, and um, she's, very, she's like my dad, really. She, she makes sure I'm always doing the right thing and, and well-dressed and all that kind of stuff. You're not hanging out with Georgie Moore, are you? No, 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 not, of course not. <laughs> okay. He's not leading you astray? No, not yet. Okay. The, um, the other person I heard who helped you a lot is uh, an old friend of mine, BT, Brent Thompson. Can you tell us a bit about that? Yes, he's, he's been my mentor back in Melbourne. Um, obviously, through both our connections with the Hayes Stable and Lindsay Park, um, BT helped me mostly through my suspension, my bad suspension runs, and we'd, um, we'd catch up for coffee a number of times, and he'd, he'd give me advice and talk to me and, and try and help me through it and he definitely did. Um, a few golf games together as well, he, he, like, he enjoys his golf as do I. Um, but he's fantastic, he's a true gentleman. Well you couldn't get a better mentor than BT could you? No, he's a, he's a great man. And about your suspensions that you had, so you put up a poster of Terry Bailey in your bedroom? No, Oops. not not quite. But, um, Back when I was, I think, just first come out of my apprenticeship, I had a, one season in particular where I got far too many. Um, some I, some that um, could have easily have been avoided, but um, I guess had to. It was all a learning curve, and I'm past that now. And um, yeah, BT's you know, the one I have to thank. What did you learn from those suspensions, if anything? Well, obviously. Um, I was still quite young. I think I was only just fresh out of my apprenticeship. I was 19 or 20. And um, just to uh, probably testing the waters too much and just pushing that line a little bit too far. Um, a couple of them were um, quite, quite lengthy ones too. And it's definitely not ideal when you get those long ones during spring carnival, um, which is where I got mine because you miss out on so much. And, um, no, like I said, that's all past me now and I have to look forward 
Strathmore charged to the lead from Jet Wings. My little friend runs on late, but it's Strathmore coming away. Strathmore goes on for a very solid win. Jet Wings held on to second. My little friend just third over Country Melody, who got out late, and then Charity Joy. Next was Go Baby Go from Disciples 12. Lovely to lovely Cargo Force Weekend, along with the Victorious, who was always... What do you remember about Hong Kong from uh, when you were here last? Yeah, I can remember a fair bit. It's been a long time. Uh, it's been... Actually, I came and visited my Uncle Jeff when he rode about... Uh, it was probably about four years ago. Um, so, had a little visit in between my time when I lived here, but I can remember a fair amount. Um, obviously, I'm now involved with the racing side, which I haven't been before, but in terms of the city, quite a bit. I remember all the areas and some of the roads, but still got a lot to learn. And what was it like living with Dad when he had a bad day at the races? Uh, no, Dad's very professional. He's, he's, um, he takes it well. He leaves his bad, bad day at the races. So for you, that first day riding in Sha Tin, that first ride, what was it like riding against people who are probably your uncles, like Uncle Douglas, mm -hmm. for instance? Not yeah. to say that Dougie is old. <laughs> no, it was, it was special. I'd, I'd only ridden with Douglas once or twice before in Australia when he's visited for a Group 1 race, but um, obviously all the other exceptional jockeys that are here is, is really good. I like, I like to compete with the best. It ha makes me have to lift my game, and it's a, it's a good challenge. But the first meeting was very special, um, you know, with the whole ceremony of, of the season opening prior to the first race. It was a great build-up and um, I got a big buzz out of that. Lots of gonging. Yeah, lots, lots of, of banging of the gong. Yes, yes there was. Yeah. And uh, when those barriers flew for the your first race, what was it like? Yeah, it's, um, it was good. I was, I was only on a, a long shot in my first ride at finished midfield, but um, it, was, it was good. It was very hot that day. It was, um, and I had 10 rides, so I was pretty non-stop throughout the day, but um, thoroughly enjoyed it. Learned, learned um, what, my first taste of what Hong Kong's like. And when you rode that first winner, I mean, it'll be silly to ask how you felt, because you felt ecstatic, but can you take us through the, the run? Yeah, um, well, obviously he's a, he's a very nice horse, um, but he'd never run over a thousand meters before, and, and I'd trialled and galloped the horse prior to the race and I was very confident he'd run very well but my only worry was whether the thousand would be too short and if he'd be able to keep up early. But as soon as the gates opened, he jumped very quickly, he travelled and he was always going to win. Um, travelled just behind the speed and when I let him go, he, he rounded the leaders up very comfortably and when he hit the front, still quite green, he wanted to look around and, and wonder but um, it was actually quite soft in the end. Do you think there's a uh, a bias with the outside barrier because I don't I didn't I didn't think you took him onto the outside you came mm -hmm. sort of in the middle didn't you? yeah well um I drew for barrier five and um came across with go baby go and I ended up with cover and then obviously because I was going so well I had to improve and my only option was from that barrier to come was to come around them back towards the inside but I was going that well, I think I could have won wherever I was. And then after Sha a few days later, you won at Happy Valley. What's the difference between the two tracks? Yeah, well, that was my first ever spin around the track here at Happy Valley. Um, completely different to Sha Tin. Sha Tin's a lovely, big, spacious track, and Happy Valley obviously is very tight and, and, and quick. Um, but my first meeting at Happy Valley, I had six rides. Um, it was good to get a win on, 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 in, in one of them. Um, yeah, Yung Sing um, bar drew barrier one, travelled midfield, and um, I was able to get off the fence and get going around the turn, and he was pretty strong to the line, so it was a good win. They backed it for a stack. Yeah, I, I believe so. Um, uh, I heard that um, its its odds came crashing in late, so it was good to know uh, the punters had a bit of, bit of faith in me. And uh, riding against people like Zach and Dougie and Callan, 
Marrera, what do you feel? What are you learning? Are you learning anything? Oh, of course. I mean, they're the best in the world, and um, just to be, you know, competing with them is great. And I guess now I have to prove that I can, I, I can match it with them, and hopefully the winners can keep coming, and I can just keep riding well, and um, and do well in my stint in Hong Kong. How do they treat you at track work and stuff? Does Zach give you advice? He gives everyone advice. Yeah, no, they're all they're all a great bunch of blokes. Um, they've all been very helpful, Zach especially. Um, they've all been helpful and and, um, and pretty up, up front in their advice. They've all tried to help me, which is great. So, is Callan uh, trying to take rides off you? Uh, not that I'm aware of, but maybe behind closed doors he is. And do you think Hong Kong's more competitive than Australia? Um, yes, I do. Um, it's obviously a lot smaller and tighter and there's not much room for error so as soon as you make one you know there's six world-class jockeys to replace you so you always have to be up up on your game and yeah in Australia it's very competitive as well but there's a lot more rides and horses and trainers to to feed all the jockeys whereas here it's a lot more close-knit but um, obviously it's it's the ultimate racing in, I believe in the world and it's, it's the toughest and the best so that's what you'd expect. Do you think you're going to be here for the uh, international races? You will be right? Yeah well I've, I've got a six month contract so that takes me to February so yes I will. So that should be exciting for you riding mm. in the internationals? Yeah hopefully I can get some rides in the future races and um, yeah get amongst it. And, and Chad do you think that people grow up very quickly in Hong Kong? you have to in any in any business do you think you'll have to grow up quite quickly and understand how the the way the local owners work and you're only as good as your last win right mm, yeah for sure um, I would agree with that and um, obviously you have your runs you have your ups and downs but um, obviously when you're down you've got to stay positive and, and keep believing in yourself and, and turn that around get back to riding winners again so mentally um, another bit of great bit of advice dad gave me was to always got to be positive and, and keep your chin up when, it, when times get tough and keep believing in yourself and, and keep trying your best Charlie's trying to bridge the gap it's Jung Sing in front from Oxford Charlie and Jung Sing wins it over Oxford Charlie uh, interesting photo third choice X checker probably just scraped in from glorious victory